I tried to beat Risk of Rain 2 while three other players hunted me down like a wild animal. My goal was to make it through eight stages and obliterate at the obelisk without dying, which is obviously easier said than done. Since I have three invincible players after my head, it's only fair to balance things out a bit. The sniper team has their HUD disabled, meaning they won't be able to locate me by username or tell when I'm about to die. In addition, their only means of damage is via scoped sniper shots. Alongside the friendly fire rune, we also enabled one that replaces chests with random monster drops. Since money is shared in multiplayer, this gives me a slight edge since I'll actually be able to compete for items. There's a few more tweaks, but I don't care to mention them all out loud, so here they are on screen and in the description if you actually care to read. So with all that said, can three railgunners stop me from beating Risk of Rain 2? Yes they can! A lot of times, actually. In fact, most of my runs didn't even make it past the first stage. There's several reasons for this. For one, all it takes is two well-placed sniper shots to kill me at level 1. The next is that the boss has four times the health pool it would have if I were playing single player. And I'm not sure if this is a multiplayer thing or the result of one of the mods we had installed, but the boss and surrounding enemies were very clearly leveling up way faster than the HUD would suggest. This forced me to play hyper-aggressively as the boss's exponential growth would make it unkillable if I took too long. To make matters worse, each of the players started off rusty, but got better at killing me as the rounds went on and my movement became predictable. Having seldom interacted with other humans, it never occurred to me that my opponents were capable of adapting and weren't just arbitrary code I could exploit to look cool on the internet. I'd need to mix things up a bit, but more than that, I'd need to get lucky. Usually the first stage teleporter will spawn one of three bosses. The best case was Beetle Queen since it's actually possible to sit pretty safely inside her hitbox while dealing damage. The Stone Titan wasn't as good for cover, but he isn't that threatening, so I'm able to just swing in circles around him. Of the three wa 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 by far the work. According to the laws of binomial distribution, there's no way I could have gotten this lucky this many times. Even though the early game is harsh, it wasn't long until a run finally made it off the ground. I clear the first stage, but with only three mediocre items on hand, I'm not very well off. I fumble the movement off spawn, but don't end up dying for it and make a straight line for the teleporter. This time, the boss is Clay Dune Strider, and I prepare myself for a fate worse than the But out of the blue, I accidentally made a huge discovery. The boss followed me into one of those void areas, and when it did, it started taking ticks of damage that gradually increased until its entire health bar evaporated in record time. In fact, it all happened so fast I almost didn't react in time to get to the teleporter before the snipers grabbed all the items. Speaking of, my inventory is still looking quite humble, but I'm able to grab the prion accumulator from the timed chest in stage 3. And when I see that the teleporter is inside the void, I breathe a sigh of relief, knowing this will be yet another easy stage. That overconfidence, however, was about to become my downfall. Uh, yeah, kill the, kill the void enemies near the boss and get the boss infected. I forgot how the corruption mechanic worked in this game, and it wasn't until after I noticed the boss wasn't taking chip damage from the void, that I knew I had screwed up. Oh shit! Oh, the boss got corrupted. That was their plan. Yeah, I can I can fire the prion accumulator again. It'll be okay. Its health is going up. I gotta be fast. <gasps> I missed! I missed with the prion. I have six collapse. I think I might just be dead. Dude, no way. <laughs> By the way, um, yep. He's dead. I was, he's I was dead? ready for that to happen. Ooh, not, uh... As soon as I saw the, dude. Okay, not only can it not die to void anymore, the bleed turns into collapse, so I just instantly oh, die. That's awesome. <laughs> Aside from just getting plain destroyed at the end there, the other mistake I had made that run was not paying enough attention to all the item drops and letting the hunters get way stronger than me. I would need to pay more heed to the sound cues and be more observant if I wanted to get the edge. Two rounds later, I made it to stage 3 again, but I only get one stealth war kit from the first boss, while the second boss drops... 8 more. I only get 3 total, but the opal shield from earlier combined with an easy boss means I get to move on to stage 4. The hunters would always tend to activate the Shrine of the Mountain whenever possible, which I thought was funny because if they didn't, then I definitely would've. More bosses means more cover, the bosses can attack each other for me, and the double drops make the run more likely to snowball in my favor. Speaking of snowball, I get another super fast kill on the stage 4 boss thanks once again to the void, get most of the drops, and collect the backup clip. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. 
Next stage, I collect a few useful items mid-boss fight, with the most notable being Kiaro's Band. This band inflicts ridiculous residual damage when hitting enemies with Loader's Charged Fist, and after avoiding every gamer's nightmare, the sun, I end up perfectly positioned to nab all eight boss drops. At this point, the difficulty ramps up and so many monsters spawn that I become near impossible to track. That, combined with my new damage, healing, and movement buffs, make me a near unstoppable force. I tear through stage 6 without any resistance, and then it's on to stage 7, the second last area. No, they're camping it, they know. Fuck you guys! Dude, I saw all of you guys camping that teleporter, like... Like, I knew you guys were, like, knew the boss was about to die. You know, I'll, 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 I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you don't know how much gold you have. I just got a red item, by the way. I won't tell you which one. Probably happy math. What the fuck? Hey, yo, where's my boy? Honestly. Which one? The funny jellyfish one? Honestly, True. Really up I, I, yeah, I kind of I unlucky that we haven't gotten the jellyfish boss. I mean, unlucky for you guys. I, I'm. It's a pretty happy coincidence for me, though. Uh, honestly, this is some dream luck. That's what I'm saying. Oh, true. Dream oh was God. really lucky. I end up dropping below half health a couple times, but otherwise clear the stage with ease. Finally, stage eight. Victory is within my grasp, and the three Beetle Queens instantly melt in the void. With that, all that's left is to wait for the zone to charge, and you know we could just activate the portal for she to loop again. Uh, don't do that, because that's actually cheating. <laughs> I think it might have been done. Yeah, we never explicitly agreed beforehand that this wasn't allowed, but since the hunters can just have one guy spamming it without any risk, we gentlemen that nobody is allowed to redirect the teleporter to send us to an unintended destination from now on. After this, the run got a little... how you say... batshit? I got out of hell, guys. That's what you see when you die. It's like a whole lot worse, honestly. Is Didi still alive? Oh uh, yeah, I'm just walking around, like I'm just chilling. How? Well, Wait, it, I, I think I can, I can end that. One Mythrix, two Mythrix, more, what's the difference? Oh shit, okay, well, when you bring out the Malachite monsters, you know, that's when the game gets hard. This is, this is when the game finally gets difficult. Is when you, you better not, dude, there's no way. <laughs> no, make it stop, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> so how long until the game crashes? This was a mistake. <laughs> I shouldn't have given any of you guys power. So, um, maybe we can, like, call this one a draw. The following round, the hunters took it upon themselves to speedrun my funeral by playing out of their minds. This was the first of a long string of back-to-back -back early game deaths. Because of how long that one round had gone on for, the snipers had gotten way better at picking me off, even in crowded areas at high speeds. So now that we're back at base speed, I might as well be moving through molasses from their point of view. I ended up dying a lot, and these goons did not understand the concept of mercy. Eventually, after all that, I managed to get another run off the ground. The hunters hit the Shrine of the Mountain, and I get some damn good items. I had so many red whips that I didn't even need to use my abilities anymore. <laughs> Rolling around at the speed of sound. Uh, got places got to and go. go. <laughs> I could move way faster, but this is just way funnier. <laughs> Having learned nothing, they hit two more Shrines of the Mountain in Stage 2, resulting in four bosses and triple drops. The Clay Dune Strider is a pain, but they get clustered together and deal enough splash damage to each other, leaving me with a mother load of items. The seven infusions meant I would be getting a permanent seven health per kill, up to 700 total. And I was now passively healing off enemies thanks to the mired urn. With some close calls, I clear yet another Clay Dune Strider, but don't get any items I can use at the moment. Then in Stage 4, all the hunters conspired to stack one of them with a shitload of crit goggles. I tried to interfere, but I couldn't grab any items and ended up being chased out due to one of them having the all-powerful Kiaro's Band. During the teleporter event, the Magma Worm kept targeting one of them way off in the distance, forcing me to chase that tail all the way across the map while someone took pot shots at me with their Kiaro's Band build. After way too much time, the Magma Worm is no more, but honestly it feels like the hunters came out of that stage way better off than I did. And on stage 5, something truly fucked up happened. I'm, I'm literally W. I'm the best player over here. Yes! <laughs> do you know what I've done? Do you know what I've done? What, what did you do? <laughs> I'm insane. We need to shoot him once. We need to shoot him once. <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, if I can't <laughs> win. Where is he? I think he went under. I saw him go down. I hit him once. He's not dead, though. Why are you shooting at me? <laughs> oh, that's you. That's God damn it. Well, I hope my teddy bear just procs every time I oh, take I damage. He he's under. He's underneath the place. He's going to the opposite side. I mean, opposite of what? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the left from where I'm currently looking. Now, on one hand, softlocking me in a tiny area where everyone has 10% of their max health and deals 5,000% damage is some truly diabolical shit, and I respect the hell out of that. But on the other hand, I felt like this kind of violated our agreement earlier about not messing with the teleporter destinations, so the compromise we came to was that they got to grab every item drop in the area, while I got nothing. From this point on, both sides were incredibly stacked. The snipers were able to take multiple shots without reloading thanks to their backup magazines, and could deal some ridiculous damage with crits and bands. Those bands ended up working against them though, occasionally melting groups of enemies for me. From the next area, I get 6 leeching seeds from the boss drop, and now I feel practically unkillable. My health bar begins to balloon to an absurd degree, and I heal too much to be done in by anything less than a sudden burst of damage. Stage 8 goes perfectly in my favor as expected, and with one final sprint to the obelisk, it all comes down to whether they somehow finish me off during my victory lap. I feel like we should be able to use our shot on the last one. Actually... <laughs> <laughs> no fair! Actually, go go off, King. I won't, I won't use any movement abilities for the rest of this. Yeah, I bet you even if all of us shot you at once, we wouldn't kill you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm standing still. Both you both you line up the shot. Let's see it. Wait, don't do that. No. Sorry, no. I didn't mean don't to move. <laughs> After many attempts, I had finally done it. I had managed to beat Risk of Rain 2 with three railgunners after my life. Well, kind of. I hella didn't mention that I got my brain cherry popped and Bulwark's Ambry revived and pretended it didn't happen, so who can say for sure who the real winner is? By the way, the three people hunting me were recruited from my Discord, so feel free to join if you want to get in on events like this, because I'll probably do something like this again. Eventually. Anyways, that's all. See ya!